Do you need to upgrade your flex battery or charger? Let's find out. I'm Tim Johnson. You're watching Shop Tool Reviews. Just a couple of short months ago, Flex released a complete new line of power tools on their 24 volt platform. Now, Flex is not a brand new company. They've been making power tools for a couple of decades now. Also, they know battery and charger technology. The mother company makes batteries and chargers for several different industries. So let's take a look at their rapid charger that charges quite a bit faster than their typical charger that you would find with one of their combo kits. But is it worth the upgrade to have that faster charge time and how much faster is it and does it really do a good job? We're going to take the four and a half and five inch angle grinder from Flex. We're going to put a cutting blade on there and we're going to use the five amp hour battery and we're going to cut steel rebar over and over and over repetitively until we deplete the battery. We're going to take the hot battery, doesn't matter how hot it is, we're going to throw it on the charger and see how long it takes to charge the battery. We're also going to see, can it safely cool the battery also while charging? Now after we do all that, we'll do some dissection of the batteries and chargers as well. Then we'll come back and wrap it up with pricing, warranty, and that sort of thing. We have a full five amp hour battery. See, I can push the button there and we've got a full battery. We just pulled it off the charger. So we're going to use a grinder with a cutting wheel. So we're going to use the flex grinder, obviously, for the flex battery. Uh, we're going to have it in high. And we're using a Type 27 wheel. It's an 045 thickness. I could use a thinner wheel to cut faster. That's not my point here. I'm wanting to drain this battery as quickly as possible. So I'm just going to make a bunch of cuts here in uh, one inch rebar. You can see there, a full one inch of rebar there. Rebar can be a real pain. There's, there's a bunch of hard spots in rebar. You never can tell exactly what your cut is going to entail. So anyway, we're gonna make as many cuts as possible to kill the battery, and then we'll put this on charge with it hot and to see how quickly the charger will recharge it. All right, here we go. Two. One thing I really like about this guard is you can turn it with no tools needed at all. Don't have to push a button or anything, just turn the guard. Okay, there's five straight cuts. We're down one cell. We've got a ways to go. After eight cuts, uh, we are down to two cells. It was down to one, so we're probably pretty close to one. Just once it cooled off a minute, it's now gone back to two. Uh, so let's make some more cuts. And by the way, I had to change out a wheel as well. Looks like maybe we've overheated. I think our battery is either overheated or depleted. Looks like the grinder's a good 140, 150 degrees right there in the gearbox. And then the battery, oh yeah, 130 degrees. So now let's take the battery and let's put it on the charger because it's nice and warm, 130 degrees. I would say past warm. We'll put it right on the charger and then we'll see how hot it is when it comes off, how long it takes to charge, and uh, again, kind of that temperature difference when it gets finished charging as well. Okay, so we've still got our overheated battery here. We've come right over to the charger. We're gonna use the 280 watt charger to charge this. This is their rapid charger. This is a 120 watt hour battery. So easy to, uh, to actually calculate that. You got 24 volts times five amp hours equals 120 watt hours. Now you have to watch that sometimes because sometimes the actual voltage is just kind of a marketing spiel, but this is actually a 24 volt battery at five amp hours is gonna give us 120 watt hours. And we're gonna charge this with a 280 watt 
charger. Now, a couple of things are going to happen here. Number one, this battery is overheated. We already know that. We've, we've looked at it. Um, it's actually given us an indication here. And we're going to go ahead and throw it on the charger. Now, as soon as I click it in, I'll click the stopwatch here. And you'll notice right away the charger goes into uh, turning a fan on. Uh, I believe there's actually more than one fan that's circulating air from the charger and not just in the charger, keep it cool. And by the way, you can see it says high temp right here. We have a solid red light and tells us the indication here means high temp. So we know that the battery is at a high temperature. So the first thing it's gonna do is cool that down before it starts charging it. That's what this charger is gonna do. So you hear the fan going, it's not just circulating it through the charger, it's actually circulating it through the ports in the battery as well to make sure that this battery is gonna come down in temperature before it starts charging it to keep these cells safe and to be able to charge this at a fast rate but also do it safely. We're gonna switch over to our GoPro so we can get more of a time-lapse feature until we've charged this battery. And just so you know, this battery is still nice and warm uh, we're still at 127, 120 plus degrees, 128 on the base of that battery. So it's still nice and warm. It is pulling the temp down. We just wanted you to know that a hot battery did go on this charger. It was not a cool battery. When it does go into charge mode, you should see it change from a solid red light to a blinking, uh, flashing dual green light. And then at 80% charge, you'll see a, a green solid at the top with a blinking on the bottom and then full charge will be both solid green lights. So we're at 29 minutes in, we're charging now and our temperature has come down to below 120 degrees. So we're still at 118 degrees, but here's the thing. We're charging the battery and pulling the temp down. Now a typical charger that could not cool the battery while it charges, you would definitely see those cells increase in temperature as it's charging. Whereas with the Flex right now, we're still bringing the temp down while we are charging this battery. Okay, so we finished charging and actually at about 48 minutes in, we went to 80% where we had one light flashing and one light solid. And then just a few minutes later at 52 minutes, it finished at 100% charging. And then it kept the fan on for another about 10 minutes at at 62 minutes, a little over 62 minutes, it actually kicked the fan off. And so now you hear, uh, obviously you see the chargers on, but you don't hear a fan running. So the charger realizes the battery's at a safe temperature, the battery is charged, and uh, the charger is obviously cool enough as well. And so we can check our charge there, and now we're at 100%. So the bottom line is in less than an hour, we took a fully overheated five amp hour battery, threw it on the charger, didn't have to babysit it, didn't have to put it to the side, let it cool down, just threw it on the charger. It cooled it down and uh, charged it to 100% in less than an hour, in 52 minutes. So that's pretty impressive. Again, just the fact that you don't have to worry about it, it's keeping everything safe and it's cooling it down for you. You don't have to remember to come back and throw it on the charger. Also, in looking back through our footage, it looks like it took about 25, 26 minutes for it to cool the battery down where it felt like it was sufficient enough uh, cool enough to actually charge. So 26 minutes to do that and it only took 52 to, to cool it down and charge it. So if you back out the 26 from 52, you're looking at 26 minutes of runtime. So that's beating the half hour it claims in charging a full five amp hour battery. So well within the specs it's saying, and again, very impressive for it to do that complete job in less than an hour. Let's take a little closer look at what's inside the Flex charger, and even the Flex batteries. So there's the five amp hour opened up. Now let's go ahead and open up the charger here. So this is the rapid charger, the 280 watt charger. A lot of this is gonna translate over to the smaller charger as well. And right there, we already see a fan. Okay, that little plug gave us a little bit of an issue there, but you see right away that we have this big ducted fan right here pulling air out of the side. 
and then we have a ducted fan here that's actually probably exhausting that out the side of the unit here. Um, so that's the one, look at that. So this, this fan right here is responsible to pull the air out of the battery. So those ports there directly mesh up with these ports here in the battery. So that's literally doing nothing more than pulling the heat out of that battery and continually exhausting it out the side of the charger. And then this one is actually exhausting all the heat out of the charger, uh, pulling it off these large heat sinks here and keeping the heat out of the charger itself. So that's pretty interesting to see is the fact that we have two fans, but that one is completely dedicated to the battery itself to keeping it cool. Now, that's not information coming from, uh, coming from uh, Flex or Shervon, so don't take that as gospel from them. Just at me looking here, obviously that's what it looks like is this fan is dedicated to keeping that battery cool, where this one is dedicated to keeping the charger cool, which, in, which is also gonna help in keeping both of them cool. But love to see kind of that dedicated design of one having its sole purpose of, uh, of keeping it cool. I also like the little bit of rubber isolator mounts here to keep the vibration down and to keep the, uh, I guess, sound down as well as uh, not much shaking around in there. Although it is pretty loud, you got two fans running, but typically when you got a, a charger running, you're in a shop location or something, so that's typically not going to bother you. Doesn't bother me anyway. I'd rather keep my batteries cool to know that it's charging correctly and it's going to keep my batteries safe for a long time. Again, you see the large heat sinks here, these aluminum plates here, so that's definitely removing any heat um, out of that circuit board or any of the, the charging circuits, if you will, and helping uh, keep this all cool in there, and especially with this fan pulling air across those, helping to keep everything uh, nice and cool. As I mentioned, this is the five amp hour pack and it runs the 18650 cells and it's actually 12 cells of 18650s and that gives us our five amp hour pack or 120 watt hours out. Now, if we look at the eight amp hour battery, uh, the 12 is gonna look a lot the same, but uh, the eight amp hour pack is 24 volts at eight amp hours, so 192 watt hours. Now, if we look at this, well, let's open it up. A little bit different configuration here. Now these are 21700 cells. And how do we know? Well, we just know, but we could also measure it and be able to tell that. And I'll show you here in just one moment. Uh, and we see here, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, so here we have 12 cells of 21700s. This is 12 cells of 18650s. So the same amount of cells, but this has eight amp hours because the 21700s just have that much more capacity. Now, a lot of the cooling technology and a lot of the technology that even uh, Flex's mother company has patented is the ability to keep these cells cool, not only when it's charging and has a fan going on them, but also to keep them cooler while they're being used and overheated, if you will, when they're really, uh, you know, a lot of energy is exerted through them uh, like in the state of our grinder when we were pushing it continually, making those cuts through one inch rebar. Now we can easily just look at this. If I lay them on its side right here, by the way, be careful when you're doing this. These are very high, high powered cells. Uh, this is a little bit taller than the smaller 18650 cells. And that's because 18650, the 650 means 65 millimeters long. The 21700, the 700 means 70 millimeters long. So you're five millimeters longer on the uh, 21700s than you are the 18650. So the easy way to tell is not take it apart like we see it here, but it would be to take a battery and you can see the 12 amp hour is quite a bit wider. In fact, it's about as wide as this battery is with the ears sticking out. So you can pretty much easily tell on a battery pack, whether it has the larger 21700 cells or the 18650 cells. And a lot of times you can also tell just by the uh, amp hour battery it is and the voltage it is, you can come to quickly calculate whether or not it has the 21700 or the 21650 cells in it. Now, I don't consider one to be bad or one to be good. Does the 21700 have more capacity? Absolutely. Does it have the potential to be a higher performing battery? 
Absolutely. Does every tool need it? No. In fact, you know, your 18650s are always going to be cheaper uh, than the 21700. So if you can get by without the need of the larger cell, then why spend the extra money on the battery? Because you will spend quite a bit more on a on a pack with a 21700 cell than the 18650. And you probably won't even find that information on the battery, but here we're telling it to you. So anyway, great technology built into the Flex products. Love to see the dual fans in the charger to be able to keep that battery cool while it's charging. We saw it actually happen. We saw it uh, take a hot battery over 130 degrees, cool that down while still charging it and doing all that in less than an hour. So really great job on that flex. Let's wrap this up. It took 10 cuts through one inch rebar to deplete the five amp hour battery. Now you may think, well, Tim, that's not a lot of cuts. And that really is. If you've ever cut rebar, you'll understand it's very hard. In fact, the worst part about it, it's got hard spots and soft spots in it. So you never really know what you're getting, even in the same piece of rebar, a half inch difference. Uh, and also, you grow exponentially when you grow in diameter, you're cutting through exponentially more steel than say just five eighths rebar. So it's more than just twice that or more than a little more than twice. Uh, but anyway, so there's a lot of steel you're cutting through here. So regardless, we cut through 10 pieces, went through a couple of different uh, cutting blades on this to do it. And it heated that battery up to 130 plus degrees. We threw it on the charger in less than an hour. It cooled that battery down and charged it completely. I believe it was like 52 minutes, if I'm not mistaken. So at like 48 minutes, it was 80% complete. So it was pretty impressive when we took it apart to see the dual fan design of how one fan is actually dedicated to drawing that air through that battery to cool that battery down. And then the other fan is removing it from the charger, keeping everything nice and cool. And also the fact that the charger knew, hey, I can't charge this battery yet. It is hotter than I want to see it. It cooled that battery down. It took several minutes, I believe 15, 20 minutes to cool that down before it actually tripped the charger on. Actually, I think it took more than 20 minutes because I believe to actually charge it, it only took about 26 minutes to completely charge it. The rest of that time was cooling it down. So that's the great thing about it. You may look at it and go, well, Tim, that took almost an hour to charge it. Yeah, but normally you would have had to set that battery aside and let it cool down before you threw it on your charger or take a chance and the risk of burning up a battery by throwing it hot, a hot battery on the charger. If your charger's not smart enough to realize, hey, wait a second, this thing's overheated, I need to cool it down. So I think Flex does a great job at being able to recognize that, pull the heat out of that battery and charge that battery once it gets to a safe temperature and to be able to keep that temperature down while it's fast charging that. So your typical combo kit uh, it's going to come with their fast charger, which is 160 watts. And to buy that alone, you're going to pay about 80 bucks. Now to step up to the rapid charger, which is 180 watt output, you're looking at a, almost double. It's about 150 bucks for this. Now, is it worth it? Well, that really depends. If you're using this for something where you're going through batteries in a high demand situation or high output situation where you're going through a lot of batteries, then it could probably pay for itself rather quickly. Or if you just don't want the frustration of waiting a long time, then by all means, it's a great buy to go ahead and buy a rapid charger. Uh, their battery cells are great cells. We saw uh, the five amp hour pack had the 18650s and the eight amp hour and 12 amp hour packs had the 21700 cells. Neither one of those are bad. Is the 21700 a higher capacity battery? Absolutely. Just in sheer terms of size, it has more capacity in it. Same goes for a fuel cell. So it's no different in a battery. However, you're paying a higher premium for a 21700 cell pack. So you're gonna get a cheaper battery in a five amp hour that has 18650 cells, then stepping up to an eight amp hour and so forth. So again, if your job doesn't require it, if the job at hand doesn't require it and you can get by with 18650 cells, there's nothing wrong with that. And I doubt you're even going to feel that performance difference. Not always, sometimes you can. But anyway, so check out the chargers and the tools and the batteries from Flex. There's some great tools in their lineup. We really love their impact wrench. We love the grinder as well, even the impact driver. And the, the drill does a great job also. Uh, their complete new line of tools. Check them out at flexpowertools.com. Also keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. If you don't mind, would you hit that like and subscribe button? But only if you liked our video. If you hated our video, give us a thumbs down, but would you let us know in the comments why? Have a great day and keep smiling.